когда приближается к финале, либо готовится какие-то учения. It's about nine o'clock and the sun is rising on a wintry morning in eastern Russia. For the residents of Chelyabinsk, today seems just like any other work day. Except at that very moment, a space rock is hurtling towards them at more than 100,000 kilometers an hour. What happens next astounds the world. It's not that rocks burning through the atmosphere are all that rare. Over the entire surface of the Earth, at least 50,000 meteors are visible every year. They happen all the time, uh, small ones, much more often big ones, but even big ones are pretty common. But people aren't often around to see them. That's why Professor Phil Bland is setting up the Desert Fireball Network, an automated system of 30 cameras to keep an eye on the sky in the remote, sparsely populated deserts of Western Australia. The cameras basically track pretty much everything that's coming through the atmosphere. So it'll see meteorites land, it'll also see space junk, uh, you name it. We'll be able to track where it came from and pinpoint where it lands. I've been doing it for 20 years, this type of work, but I'm still geekily fascinated by the fact, you know, you pick up a rock from space. The Chelyabinsk fireball of 2013 had even more to offer. It streaked through a clear sky in daylight over a region where millions of people live. And that's what made this one different, because it's the first meteorite impact to be widely recorded. Digital eyes are everywhere. In Russia, cameras on the dashboards of cars and taxis called dashcams are common. Security cameras monitor traffic and public places. Smartphones are wielded by shocked citizens. Hundreds of cameras capture the fireball during and after its plunge towards Earth. Many of these videos are uploaded to social media and within hours, they're an internet sensation. This one, for example, has been viewed more than 38 million times. But more than just clickbait for web surfers, Hidden in these videos is information about meteorites that's never been available before. So just what can scientists learn from YouTube? When you know what to look for, forensic astronomy reveals all kinds of clues. By calibrating video frames with reference points like buildings, trees or even stars, you can figure out the location and the angle of the camera. When a fireball comes through, several cameras see it, and we can work out, based on the angles that they see, uh, exactly what its trajectory is. We triangulate it. So we can work out where it lands and where it comes from in the solar system. Even 100 kilometers away, the fireball appeared 30 times brighter than the sun. People reported feeling a blast of heat, and some suffered skin burns. Using videos to analyze the brightness of the fireball, indicates the energy of the airburst. And from that, the asteroid's size as it enters the atmosphere, about 19 metres in diameter, with a total mass of about 10,000 tonnes. As friction slows the meteorite down from 20 kilometres a second and vaporises more than 90% of its mass, it leaves a dust plume more than 250 kilometres long. The meteorite explodes 30 kilometres high in the stratosphere with a force equivalent to half a million tonnes of TNT or a powerful nuclear bomb. Several minutes later, the resulting pressure waves and sonic booms reach the ground. Across an area of about 5,000 square kilometres, more than 1,500 people are injured as doors blow in and glass windows smash. Some are lucky to escape with their lives. As well as analysing the time of the blasts, measuring the angles of imploding windows helps to model the shape of the shockwave. It means that scientists can develop much more accurate models of an airburst based on an actual meteorite, 
rather than the mathematics of nuclear tests as they have up to now. These small events, yeah, can cause a lot of damage. In terms of what we can do about it, that's a trickier one. It's very, very hard to see those size objects in space and give us any sort of warning that they're going to hit us. But predictions of what happens when they do are now closer to reality. Kind of Phil's team at Curtin University have a smartphone app so you can help too. Uh, but it's called Fireballs in the Sky. It works for iPhone and Android. Gives you kind of heads up display of where the fireball started, where it ended, and that kind of logs its exact position. So if you've just seen a fireball, say it started there, and you track it across, say it finished there, you can submit it, and if we get two or three of those, basically we can triangulate where it was in the atmosphere, just like we would with the cameras. It also records the timing and the sound of sonic booms. If you've heard something. How many people are using this app and where? I think it's about 6,000 now, uh, mostly in Australia, but all over the world. Fireballs can happen anywhere, anytime. If you see one, don't panic. As far as we know, no one has ever been killed by a meteorite. But don't forget the sonic boom that could follow and move away from windows. And if you can, grab your nearest digital device, take some photos and videos, send it to Catalyst and show it off. Astronomers and planetary scientists everywhere will thank you for it.